Hello everyone. I have been mentoring people recently to help them get into machine learning industry or get a better job as a machine learning engineer. And I discovered the three common fallacies they've been telling themselves that I actually resonate with because I've been telling myself the same thing why just start you looking for a machine learning job. So today I want to share those with you. If you are new here, I'm Moon, a machine learning engineer at Amazon. I landed my first machine learning job as a biology student in four months. So I created this channel channel to share my experience along the way. Now let's jump into the three most common misconceptions. Fallacy number one, I do not have five years experience or I do not know this or that technology, so I'm not qualified for this position. You will never find a job description where you meet every requirement listed there. Usually, if you meet two thirds of them or even half of them, you should go ahead and apply for them. Also, I want you to think, if you do meet every requirement on the job description, why would you want to apply for it? Because the growth space will be very small. So if you do land this opportunity, you may need to come back to the job market very soon. So in a sense, you are basically wasting your own time. I don't know if you realize this, every senior engineer starts as a junior engineer. So whatever challenges you are facing, very likely someone have been facing the same problems. So instead of wondering how hard this is or how much you hate the current job interview process, Process, it will save you a lot of time if you find someone who have already solved this problem. And they may not share the exact same life situation as you, but usually there are enough common factors to exploit. Also, I want to mention this because I had this issue. Why I was looking for job is how to stay focused or how to create a narrative for yourself to stay focused. A narrative that worked for me was to remind myself that my goal is not to be the best engineer. It's not to do impressive amount of work that I can change the industry. That was not my goal. My goal is to get into this industry, to get into a position so I can grow most efficiently. The last point I want to include under this fallacy is if you don't like this deal, just leave it on the table. Don't waste your time complaining or wondering how hard this is. All you can do is just keep practicing your craft and be patient because you will find a deal that deserves your work, but you need to be ready when that deal comes. I want to include this because even at this stage, I still have friends who when we talk, they will spend their time, spend their bandwidth to discuss how hard their current job situation is or the job market is. For me, I think that it's part of the game. You have to figure out a way to manage the conflicts in your head, to understand and command how you think and how you act. I think that's not a nice to have skill. I think that's the easiest way to win. If you're interested in this thread, you can read about cognitive dissonance and closure. Fallacy number two, I'm hired for my technical skills, so I need to master programming and machine learning. Someone asked me recently, how did you master lead code? My answer was, I didn't. I don't think it's possible or worth the time to master any technology in the realm of software engineer and machine learning because the knowledge base and the tooling are growing much faster than our brain ingestion rate. These are some popular tools in the domain of machine learning engineer. Do you think there exists a person on the earth that can master all of those? If your answer is no, then you can realize that that is not the right way to play this game. On top of that, I think the idea of mastery can actually hinder your growth. Let's say you want to be very good at Python or PyTorch, and you did dedicate two years to improve your skill. Then what? You won't have a title on your forehead saying, I'm the master of PyTorch top of the mountain, because nobody cares about your skill if you can't deliver value from it. I think focusing on technology itself can help you to fill up that success meter and grow into the identity a job gave to you. But it doesn't directly contribute value to the business who is actually paying for you to do the work or growing your career overall.
Technology is one of many tools you can use to solve a problem, but what is the right approach given a problem really depends on the nature of the problem, not what you are good at. So instead of investing your time in mastering any technology, I think a better way to do this is to make sure you have a solid understanding of the basic concept in this field and have the overview of the landscape of technologies. And besides the technology, I think investing in time to improve as a person to live a happier life, that you really rewards a lot more. Sometimes it's just your physical health, some good habits, a good relationship. One thing I find very beneficial for myself is to develop the habit of sitting through the discomfort when you realize how much work needs to be done and you are totally overwhelmed by the situation because you are not good at any of those work that need to be done. An analogy that may help illustrate this anti-mastery idea is the on-demand business model. Instead of you having this long loop of moving a product from the manufacturer to the distribution to the customer, the on-demand business model had it reversed. You manufacture the product on the go, and here the product is our skills. So instead of making the decision which technology you want to invest in heavily, you don't need to make that decision. You just learn the very specific part of each technology on the go. To correct this misconception, I don't think you are paid for your skills. I think you are paid for the impact you can make in a very specific working environment that you are hired for. Fallacy number three. Getting into a big tech means I'm good enough as a machine learning practitioner. That is true if you don't have your own standards. There was one time a recruiter reached out to me from a well-funded startup. She told me that I would be a great fit for this opportunity. So I asked her what exactly made she think so. And her answer was along the line that since you are hired by Amazon, you must be good enough for us. And my thoughts on that was, I don't think this startup will make it. Because big tech has a very different working environment than startups or freelancing. Most of your technical skills are not transferable to those different environments due to the internal tooling and the company history. What makes it worse is if you are not careful enough, you may pick up bad way of thinking or bad practices from those big tech and grow into a adult baby because of your experience working in big tech. And whenever you may want to leave the big tech, you may need to unlearn those practices, those ways of thinking and go through a phase of detoxing. The credibility that you think that should come with the job title in big tech only work for people who haven't entered in this industry. Sometimes we learn from noise more than from signal. And this is extremely painful because you changed yourself, you sacrificed some part of yourself, only later on you realize the sacrifice you made have to be undone. There are many other misconceptions that you will need to learn and I will need to learn. But these are the three fallacies that came up recently when I'm helping other people. The application of machine learning is still in its early days. and there will be more and more people entering this industry. So please take your time investing in yourself. If you have more questions about getting into machine learning industry, please leave a comment or reach out to me through the links in the description of this video. See you next time.